बंदौ संत संत न चरण दुख प्रदौ भयो बीच कुछ वर्ण बिछुरत एक प्राण हरिल मिलत एक दारुण दुख दे from tulusidasa a medieval saint i bow down to both the wicked and holy because they are both equally torturers the wicked begins to torture me as soon as they come in contact with me the good take my life away when he leaves me om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi peace 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 be to This morning, our subject is Stories of Vedanta Monks, Part Eight. It is a series of lectures. I came in contact with these great monks from the age of fourteen. It is natural for human beings that they adore role models, a perfect man. they worship beauty power divine qualities which is very natural for all human beings who is the ideal person that person who is equally developed in head in heart and in hand head tremendous knowledge heart tremendous love hand tremendous power of action when you see these three things fully developed in a person that person becomes a role model in vedantic system if your life he is blended with four yogas he will be perfect first karma yoga Answer this action. Bhakti yoga, devotion, Gana yoga, knowledge, Raja yoga, meditation. When these four things are practiced in one life, that person becomes perfect. That is the way we practice Vedanta. the success of human being depends on the strength of these three forces as i told you hand head and heart do these we find in god men rama krishna buddha jesus rama krishna how can we insignificant human people <clears throat> can follow or imitate these god or these divine beings that is a very vital question i remember when i was a student i used to read the imitation of christ by thomas a kempis how to imitate christ if your life follows christ life and teachings that means you are imitating christ though i am not seeing christ in in physical form in front of me but i know you are what the life should be because we know christ we know his life we know his teachings that is the way we we change we transform our lives that is the way that is the reason people come to spiritual life transformation you are not going four hands four heads and eight legs your body will remain the same but your inner being will change that vedanta teaches it may take life after life to change 
We do not see these great souls, but we follow them. Seeing the ocean, I was th thinking that I shall make a pond, imitating the ocean. Or seeing the vast space, you are thinking, I shall make a canopy, imitating the, in the vast space. It is very, very difficult for us to comprehend that infinite God. We are very tiny human beings. But, do you know how do I look at it? I go to Laguna Beach in my summer. I see the children make a hole, make a pond near the beach, digging the snow, digging the sand, and make a round pool. All of a sudden, the big wave comes and covers that small pool. So this tiny hole of that little child becomes part of the ocean. That is the way I look at human beings. You can time, connect yourself with the infinite. Then you do not think that I am a pool anymore or a small hole. I am the ocean. That experience comes. When you realize Brahman, you have become one with the infinite. When we read the lives of the saints, you know, say Saint Teresa, Saint Francis of Assisi, and other great people, we know how it works. Today I shall talk to you about Swami Gambhirananda, the tenth president of the Ramakrishna Order. As a guest, to join him in December 1st, 1958. I came to the monastery as a proofreader and editor for Wellington Land, Calcutta, in the central part of Calcutta, which is a huge publication department of the Ramakrishna Hoja. And I lived with him nearly six, seven years. I shall talk more about my reminiscences about him. First, I shall tell you a brief biographical sketch of the Swami. The Swami was born in Silet in northeastern part of India in 1899. And he passed away in 18, sorry, 19, 1899. 1988. He was a brilliant student, got a scholarship, finished his school in his, in his place. Then he came to Calcutta and became a student of Scottish Church College. It's a Christian missionary college. All top colleges at that time, missionary colleges, they have got very good education. So he graduated in 19, I think 22. Then he got a job as an accountant in the British Army. You will have to understand, India was under British rule till 1947. Then India was became independent and partition, India and Pakistan came into existence. So he got a job in Burma, Rimu, Myanmar. He read Swami Bibi and Sri Ramakrishna and straight with his dress band coat, he went to Banaras to join. Banaras Swami looked at him and said, we cannot take you in the monastery, seeing his dress and all these things. We do not know you, so we cannot allow you to join here. Sir, I have come to join the monastery and you won't accept me. No. Because they are afraid, the Swamis. Because there are some people, they are revolutionaries. They are fighting for against the British. 
they are hiding themselves in a monastery to escape arrest. So they are, for that reason, he was rejected. He was a little broken hearted. I heard from him. His life stories that how this man was rejected and even became the president of the Ramakrishna order. He was rejected twice. Then he went, but then he asked the abbot, Sir, could you write down that I came here to join and you rejected me? Oh, no, 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 I, shall, I cannot write that thing to you because I do not know you. Sir, can you do one thing for me? Just write down that I came to see Shami Jagodananda, whom he knew, in Banaras, and I did not see him. Uh, so, I am going to Balloon Mod, the headquarters of the Ramakrishna Mod. That you can write. But yes, that I can write. So he wrote, this young man came to see Swami Jagadananda, but Jagadananda is not here. Then I signed and gave that, that a small note and gave to him. He came to Balloon Mod. Then, sir, I want to join. We do not know you, we, can, we shall not, you will not be accepted here. Then he just, at that time, Shami, it was 1923, Shami Shivananda, the second president of the Ramakrishna order, he was a disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. <coughs> so what happened? Again I am rejected. So he was broken out, just sat, on the on a veranda in the monastery in Belur Mat. Belur Mat is the Calcutta is the east side of the Ganges, our monastery is the west side of the Ganges. He just sat in the veranda. The meanwhile, a Swami, Swami Sambhavananda Nirvedananda, they had a school in Bihar, Devgat. Then seeing this man, yeah, sir, I am a graduate. Then the Swami became very compassionate. He went to Swami Shuddhananda, the assistant secretary, and said, Maharaj, give me this young man to us. We shall take him to the school and make him a school teacher. Let us give him a trial. Thus, he went with these two Swamis to Devgar. Then he became a worker there. Then he became the headmaster of that school. Then he became the secretary of that school. Very sincere well versed in three languages, English, Bengali, Sanskrit. And he knew Hindi also. So, then, you know, this one thing I like in America, if you have talent, you must prosper. It manifests. So he was so sincere that he started to translate the Upanishads. Three volumes of the Upanishad, eleven Upanishad, he translated from Sanskrit into Bengali, with word by word meaning. Then they made him assistant secretary of the Ramakrishna Martin Mission. Before that, he became the editor of the Prabuddha Bharata in 1942-43. Brilliant writer. Then he became assistant secretary the trustee. Then he, re he resigned in, I think, 40s, in 53. Then they made him the president of the Advaita Ashrama, where I joined. President, we have one our headquarters in the Himalayas, which is very close to Chinese border, 68 miles interior of the Himalayas. There I used to stay. <coughs> There we have the editorial department of the Prabuddha Bharata, which was started by Vivekananda in 1898. So, Swami became the president there. Then they made him again assistant secretary. Then in 64. Then he became the general secretary in 66. Till 1978, he was the Janskaji, that is the executive head of the whole Ramakrishna order. Then he 
became the vice president of the order. Then in 85, he became the president, and then he passed away in 88, December. <coughs> Sometimes he used to tell the stories of the Jairi disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. One day I went to Shami Bhigyanananda, and many jibuchis brought some fruits, sweets for the Swami. And these other monks are thinking, today we will get some good food, you know. Then when all people left, Shami Bhigyananda asked his attendant, throw away all fruits and food into the Ganges. The monks are thinking, what is the matter? Throw away right now. You see, he was a knower of Brahman. He could see what is in others' mind. He noticed that person was very impure and immoral way he earned money. With that money he brought the food. He bought the food. Throw away. No monk should eat it. It will be polluted. He told this story. Another story he told about his, he got his first vow in 1923, final vow 1928. His name became Swami Gambhiranand. Gambhir means very grave, serious one. <laughs> he told another story of his guru. Swami Shivananda came to Devgar. Whole night Swami was struggling, suffering from asthma, gasping, was about to die. All of a sudden, he went into deep meditation and withdrew himself from the body. And then watching, he saw the Atman in the heart. And then he became absorbed in that Atman and Asma disappeared. The next morning when the monks came to bow down to him, to pay respect, that is our custom. Senior monks, we go and respect in the morning. He was telling the monks, you know, last night I was about to die. Then do you know what happened? I just concentrated on the Atman. And my pain, misery left me. You know, when we hear these stories of these Nuvars of Brahman, we know how to lead, how to have that kind of experience. They teach us. Anyhow, he was a great writer. He wrote many books. I, sometimes I used to read the proof of his writings. He wrote Holy Mother's biography. Then he translated ten Upanishads, then nine Upanishads with Shankara's commentary, Gita with Shankara's commentary. You see, you can write, it is not easy to translate the Upanishad into, into English if you do not have vast knowledge in Sanskrit. And Shankara's commentary, very complicated. So he translated all those things. It is very, very popular all over the world. They all want to study. You will find his name is there. Then Brahma Sutra, Shankara's commentary. Then he edited three volumes of Swami Vivekananda's life, 2,000 pages. And then I was the editor of that book by Thakur's grace. <laughs> And many other books. But despite of all these writings, very humble. One day he was telling, you know, do you see? This world is very vast. See the map. In this whole universe, India, Asia is a continent. In Asia, India is a country. 
In India, Bengal is a province, state. And then Howrah is a district in that province. And Belurmat is a tiny monastery. In that Belurmat, Swami Gumbirananda, very small, tiny, compared to the whole universe. I still remember he had detachment of retina, came for surgery in Boston, Massachusetts General Hospital in 1972. I was then in Hollywood. So I went from Hollywood to see him. And I saw him lying down in bed and one American brahmachari was his attendant. So he introduced, Swami Chaitanya has come to see you. He, then he talked to me. I saw he was lying down and this Brahmachari was reading the Kato Upanishad and he was explaining. In the afternoon when I went, I saw he was lying down, the Brahmachari was reading the Gospel of Ramakrishna and he was listening. I learned when you become sick, how to keep your mind in God. Completely withdrew his mind from the body and keep kept. It is worth seeing to see. It is really, really. Sometimes, you know, we, when we are sick, bed in hospital, we complain, ooh, ha, ah, ooh, ah, we know, the suffer, all these things. But these people really know how to draw the mind from the body and live in God. I watched it. I lived with these people. Somebody asked me, tell me the secret. How did you practice your life? Then do you know what did you say? I practiced the third verse of the fifth chapter of the Gita in my life. Gyo sanitya sannasi yo na deshti na kangshati nirdando hi mahabaho dukham bandhat pramuchati. Gyo sanitya sannasi Know him that he is a true sannyasin, true monk. You are not deshti, no kangshati, who never hates anybody and does not seek anything from anybody. Completely desireless. Not deshti, no kangshati, nirdando hi mahabaho, he Arjuna, great, great warrior, nirdando, he is beyond the pairs of opposites. Do you know what this world is? To oppose. Good, bad, profit, loss, happiness, misery. This is called pairs of opposites. This is antithesis. So, Nirdando, is this man is not affected by good and evil. He is above that. Mahabhava, Dukhang Bandhat Pramuchyate. That person easily becomes free from this bondage of Maya. That I practiced in my life. Very austere, no luxury. He never had any wristwatch, <laughs> no gadget, plain living, plain thinking, great memory. He used to tell his attendants, you serve me, I serve you. You serve my body, I serve your soul. I shall read some stories too about him. One of my friends asked him, Maharaj, have you seen God? Yes, I have seen. But I did not see as I see you in like this. I saw him, that luminous form of my chosen deity in my heart. Sri Ramakrishna, Holy Mother, Swamiji. In, when he became, I think at that time he was vice president, he went to Amarnath, that ice cave in Kashmir. He sat down in front of the, that lingam. And then all of a sudden he told Shami Atmasthananda, who was his assistant secretary, Hey, I see Sri Ramakrishna, not Shiva, Sri Ramakrishna. He was so excited. He told his vision. He 
anyhow a great soul now i shall tell my reminiscences this is the swam and this is the collection of his reminiscences i wrote the introduction of the book and the long reminiscences in this book when i came as a proof reader i found he was seated in a very small room in a canvas reclining chair with a pad in hand that is he was right he does not have any desk in this way he was right one day i went i found that he had a tremendous stomach pain pain the manager swami went to him said jao 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 don't disturb me he asked him to leave then i went to his room and said maraj you were in pain you should take some rest rest if i lie down in bed do you think my pain will go away can you give me guarantee no guarantee maraj you were in pain putting a hot water bottle you were suffering please take some rest at that time i remember he was translating horipada mitra's reminiscences from bengali to english that reminiscences of vivekananda that book he was preparing then he said you know when i work for swami ji i forget my body idea i forget pain i learn from him what is called karma yoga how to work for god it became a great lesson for me all through my life i was trying to practice that one <coughs> then he was asked to write three articles in encyclopedia of india you have seen for us encyclopedia britannica all the great people write in those encyclopedia so he was asked to write three articles each article should be within 500 words they have they count the words so he wrote it became 9 900 words then he asked me you know i wrote my exceeded the limit of my words can you reduce some of my words i just joined the monastery young boy <laughs> uncle yes maharaj i can do it so i reduced i think 100 or 200 words uncle maraj i could not bring it to 500 are the dozen match had sent sent to the editor of the encyclopedia of india who was his classmate shojani kanto das he told published upon the bungyo sahitya parishad i remember one boy joined he was a strict vegetarian so one of my friends made french toast you know bread soaked into the egg batter and then fried so he ate it he never knew he ate for a egg in his whole life later on when he became a, when he heard that it was egg he became very sick and he complained to the swami then swami called the kitchen in charge my friend this is the first this is the last don't make any practical joke with anybody sri ram krishna never disturb anybody's faith this is the last warning don't do it again i still remember <laughs> once some boys are playing carrom in the in the in the in the quarry in the our class place evening time he came up from his upstairs this is evening it is a time for meditation nothing else saying this he just went downstairs bas next day the carrom board was sent to a school <laughs> no more carrom board <laughs> i 
I still remember when he was translating Brahma Sutra, it took five years. Then we had a new building in Italy. Swami used to go and sometimes supervise it. Then I still remember one day I went to hear his lecture in Kashipur Garden House on 1st of January. Most probably it was 1959 or 1960, either one of these two years. There was a famous speaker. He was a political leader. He was lecturing. Sri Ramakrishna came for the householders, not for the monks. The monks have already renounced. So they will go and lead a spiritual life. Sri Ramakrishna came to help the householders. He gave a long lecture, one hour. Then Swami Gumbirananda was presiding. He got up and said, Sri Ramakrishna came neither for the householders nor for the monks. He came for those who sincerely want to realize God. Bas. In one sentence, he cut that, <laughs> that famous speaker's statement. He neither came for the monks or for the householders. Those who sincerely want to realize God, he came for them. One day he was telling me, you know, sometimes some people speak. Uti shayakti. Uti shayakti means they exaggerate. They embellish. So he was telling him, you know, sometimes some people speak. That is not right. That is not true. You will, among your friends, you will say, sometimes they embellish, they exaggerate something. But they, they deviate from the truth. Then he told me a funny story. You know, one man had that habit. So his friends told him that when we exaggerate, it sounds ludicrous. Then this friend said, hey, when I go, exaggerate, just give me a push. Then I shall reduce my, my statement. So, so, so what happened? He was telling, you know, once upon a time we went for a hunting and we killed a tiger who, which was 18 feet tall. So his friends gave him a push. Well, we did not have the scale at that time, you know, tape. It must be at least 14 feet. Again push. Well, maybe 12 feet. Then again push. Then 10 feet, 8 feet. In this way he was coming down. Then which came up to 6 feet. Again the friend gave him a push. Then he was looking to his friend. Do you think the tiger did not have any tail? <laughs> Ah, we are laughing, <laughs> laughing. That's how people exaggerate. Never deviate from the truth. <laughs> that was a funny story. <laughs> it was a trustee. He used to go to meeting to Balloon Mart by bus, by tram. No position, no money. He used to take one rupee from the kitchen in church, bus fare, then return that remaining balance. It was in 1963. I was the kitchen in church for one year. You will have to supervise cooking for 24 people, three, four meals a day. You will have to shop every day. So I had to cook for him sometimes. Just a soup. His stomach was not very good. All four or five kinds of vegetables, saute a little bit, and then perhaps some fish, a couple of fish, a piece of fish, soup. Day after day, he was eating the same thing. I asked one day, but shall I change the menu? No. Whatever you are giving, that is very good for me. Do you know what Bhagavatam says? Jitam sarvam jiti rashi. The person who has controlled the tongue, he has controlled everything. Jitam sarvam rasham jitam sarve. 
complete control over the tongue. Gītam sarvam jiti rashi If the breakfast, the, he is very punctual. Six o'clock breakfast bell. If you do not give the bell, he will come to the kitchen and you will ask him, shall I help you? May I help you? That means you are not fit for the, for the job. You must be right. You will be very soon anyhow. I shall never forget that kind of thing. I have to get up at 4, 4 30. It is not America. You will have to make coal oven. First you will have to put some wood, then kerosene oil, set the fire, then put this, this coal, and then cover it. Smoke will go out. It will take 20 to 25 minutes to make the fire ready for cooking. Hard job. <laughs> I still remember. <laughs> One day I was talking about, I was a very proofreader monarch. This book should become, Swami Vivekananda's life should be updated because Gargi wrote six volumes, Vivekananda in the West, New Discoveries. These materials have come out it is a backdated biography of Swamiji. We must update it. Seeing my enthusiasm, he made a remark. <laughs> you know, let me tell you, young man, <laughs> time factor is there. It will be done, but please wait. Then he told me a story that Krishna came to establish eternal religion. He killed many demons. After the Kurukshetra war, he went to Dharoka, leading a retired life. One day, he was walking through the street. People are shutting the doors. Very Krishna, wherever he goes, he starts war. We shall not see his face. One day he was very hungry. He asked a old lady, could you give me some food? His, her milk pot fell from her hand and broke. He closed, the, he entered the house and closed the door. She. Then he was a little bit disappointed. He told his friends and said, you Daru, you know, I have a last message. Before I leave this world, I shall give this last message. But I think I shall depart from this world very soon. Lord, why? Why will you leave this world? I am God in human form. I could not do everything in this world. So in this world, <laughs> you have nothing to do. We think that we want to do many things. It is the God who does everything to us. Be the instrument. When the time comes, the work will be done. Then he says, this world is a dog's curly tail. Curly tail. You straighten it out, again it will be curly. Straighten it out, again it will be curly. But, do you know what is the secret? That I always tell people. This world is a dog's curly tail. We are going to straighten it out. We will definitely fail. And while trying to do so, we will be straightened out. Our life will be straightened out by making this effort to make the world good. The more you try to make the world good, the more it is good for you. You are doing good to yourselves. While doing good to others, you are doing good to yourself. That is the way transformation comes. He gave a very good lesson to me. Then I, when I joined my you know, young boy, <laughs> he, I wrote a letter to him in Mayabhuti. Then he wrote to me, listen, when I was a young 
student, just second grade, third grade, we have to memorize a poem. Name of the poem is Paribona. I cannot. Name of the poem is I cannot. Then he say he quoted that poem. That letter is still with me in my room, it's written in 1961 from my body. Paribona bole ko katha chhi bolio na aur kya no paribe na tha abo bar bar padjo ne pare jaha tumi o paribe tha paro ki na paro karo joto na bar paribona bole mo kori ho na bar. We memorize that poem also. Never say in your life that I cannot. If you fail once or twice, try again and again. If ten people can do it, you can do it. Never make your face gloomy and grouchy that I cannot. He very much against this negative people. No good, this negative people. I cannot. It cannot be done. Hopeless. He became an ideal role model for me about karma. How to do it? Try, fail, doesn't matter. Jatni kriti na siddhu di tatra kopi dosha. Yoga Shastra says, striving again and again. If you fail, it doesn't matter. At least you can have satisfaction. I tried, but failed. Then he said, I remember it was sometimes seen. Sixty-two, sixty-three. First Russian woman astronaut, Valentina. She went and remember that the flash down in Siberia. She came to Calcutta, and they gave him a civic reception. Swami went in that. He was a famous person, so he went with the other two swamis. And then he came in the evening and told me that you know I learned a new Bengali today. I said, "What did you learn?" He said, "Valentina wrote some Bengali words in Russian language. You know, in, in translated in Russia, Russian language, and read in the meeting. The, the sentence is this." अपना दे देशी आशी आमदे रुत्तन तो गरम लगी आची तो वे गरम आभाव और गरम ना है रीढ़ आयर गरम आफ्टर कमिंग टू दी ओर की ओर कंट्री वी फील वेरी हॉट पर दिस ही डज नॉट कम फ्रॉम द एटमॉस्फेयर इट कम्स फ्रॉम योर हार्ट दैट शी रोट इन बेंगली वेरी ब्यूटीफुल वे द हीट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम योर हार्ट नॉट फ्रॉम द एटमॉस्फेयर So he said, he was telling Ridhoi Gorom. We never use the word in that way. You know, for the heart, the heat of the heart, we do not. Then he was asking me, do you know Ridhoi Gorom? The warmth of the heart. I cannot know more. <laughs> Very funny. Sometimes, oh my goodness. Sometimes a disciple of Holy Mother. Lost his wife, Shuren Chakraborty. He used to come to Swami for discussion, for consolation. So he he said, "Please go to this boy." Man, I was working in the office. Please talk to him. I do not have too much time. <laughs> One day, Swami Shivesharananda ji told Shivesharananda Shivesharananda ji told, "Maharaj, you stay in your room and you do not give any." Advice to the young monks: Do they not see my life? That's enough. How I live my life, that is enough. Then it was in 1963. I am supposed to go for train center. Two years he will have to stay in the headquarters, rigorous training. So I. Was busy with Swami Vivekananda Centenary, 1963. So I was asked not to go to the training center, work for the center. So I went and told the president of the order, Swami Madhavananda. He said, "Gopinanda said the right thing. Huh. You are thinking that you will be a junior. One year, you know, I will be postponed for your vows. Do you know who is senior, who is junior?" 
The person who is close to Sri Ramakrishna, he is senior. The person who is away from Sri Ramakrishna, he is junior. It does not depend upon your age. Sometimes we find that young people are more spiritual than the grandparents. It does not, your spirituality does not depend upon age. That he told you. I remember when this farewell, nearly 250 monks will eat. It is a big feast, farewell feast. And I was the kitchen in church. I left to prepare 10 to 12 items, shopping, running around. <laughs> One day seeing me, he was telling me, Hello, young man. Why are you working so hard to throw me out from this place? <laughs> He's being farewell. <laughs> I shall never forget that sentence. He told you in English, Hello, young man. Why are you working so hard to throw me out from this place? <laughs> then when I went to change center, he said, Hello, you know, I went to the hospital to see a sick monk and he was reading a fiction, 30 rupees value. Money price of that book, Kodi Diye Kinlam by Bimal Kaur, Bimal Mitra. If I write Swamiji's life, people will read. I tell him, of course, Swamiji, you read. So he wrote three volumes, Jugonayak Vivekananda, in Bengali. As I said, that I had an opportunity to edit that book. Love and freedom, these are the two conditions of growth. Love and freedom. If I do not love you, if I do not give you freedom, you will never grow. That we learn from him. <laughs> One day he was telling me, what do you want? Nothing. Not even blessings. And that you were showering me all the time, I don't, I will not have to ask for it. <laughs> so he smiled. In 1969, after my Shanna, Swami asked me, now you'll have to go for lecturing. Uncle, I don't believe in lecturing. <laughs> he was just like my father, you know, Godfather. I can say anything. He will like it or don't like it, it doesn't matter, but I put your name in the mission office as a speaker. <laughs> In 1971, I was selected to come to Hollywood. It was on Shami Vivekananda's birthday, I still remember. He told me, get ready, you will have to go to Hollywood. Uncle, wrong choice. I am too young to go to Hollywood. You sent a senior Swami. There are many educated, learned monks in the Ramakrishna order. You have been selected by the trustees. If you do not want to go, you write a letter to me. I shall place it in the board, in the trustee meeting. The vice president Swami told me, don't say no. <laughs> Swami, Nirbhananda. So when I was coming to Hollywood, I remember 1st June 1971, I left Bombay, Moscow, Paris, London, New York, Los Angeles. So, when I came to Los Angeles, a huge, many, 60, 70 people came to receive me. And many swamis and movies. So, one American pushed our crowd and grabbed my hand. I came with the cloth, even it's lean and thin. I don't know who you are, you must be very important. Otherwise, why so many people have come to receive you? Let me shake hands with you first. <laughs> that is an American way, you know. <laughs> so I wrote a letter, Maharaj, you sent me to the, to America, tying my hands and feet and threw me into the ocean of Pacific. And if I want to survive, I'll have to swim. I do not find any other way. So he wrote me back because I had some disturbed, some I could not get 
That that letter is still with me. <laughs> I took him to Laguna Beach. He wanted to see Pacific, so and the sunset and the big wave came and fell on his feet. I said, "Mana, the the Pacific Ocean took the dust of your feet." <laughs> Then we changed his socks and everything. <laughs> There are so many memories I have with him. I wrote. Routine. I have never seen a person. Six, five, five o'clock. He will four thirty-five. He will start his meditation. Six. Breakfast. Before six, he will read a little class Upanishad. Six to six thirty breakfast. Six thirty to seven class. Then he will go for work till twelve o'clock. In between, he will take his bath and take a little meditation. Then twelve to twelve thirty, I can see how his his routine lunch. Then he will see a little newspaper. Immediately one o'clock, he will go to bed. Two o'clock, he will get up. Four o'clock he will take a cup of tea, and then again he will start to work. Four o'clock a cup of tea. Six o'clock he will go for walk. Come back, bus. Our evening. Our no no more reading. Meditate till nine o'clock. Then supper. Then he will sit in the class. Ask the questions if any monks have any questions. Then he will go to bed at ten o'clock. Something like that. Very routine life. One of his uh, one day when he was passing and he was two minutes late, his attendant. Maharaj, you only two minutes late. Two minutes late. Do you know what? A Boeing jumbo jet flies six hundred miles per hour. So one minute means ten miles. So two minutes means twenty miles. And you think two minutes is not important? In two minutes, the Boeing goes twenty miles. Speed, movement—that is very important. Do not misuse every any minute in your life. That I learned from him. Do not misuse time. Time is so precious. And always do something constructive. I learned from him. Some of the things are so inspiring. I cannot tell you. He was at the same time very humorous. He was talking one day about self-effort. There is a story. It is in Jog. Jivan Mukti Bibi ka in that book. Once a bird, couple of birds, have some eggs on the shore of the ocean, and the big wave came and took away the eggs. And these two birds went to bring some food. When they came, they lost their eggs. So they are trying to dry the ocean. What were they doing? They went to the ocean and take a little water from the ocean and shaking on the shore. Thinking this is the way these birds can can dry the ocean and get their eggs back. At that time, Vishnu, the great god, was going flying over the sky on on his career. Of Vishnu is the guru, the king of the birds. So Vishnu said, "Hey, guru, hey, look, your descendants are trying to dry this ocean, which is impossible." 
Why don't you go and help them? So Goruda came with his big wings and shook the whole ocean. And the ocean was scared of Goruda. So he returned the eggs. The Swami told this story. Never give up. Make a tremendous effort in your life. Success will come. When physical effort fails, divine grace dawns. Look, this is the story. You must make effort to make progress in life. He told the monks, first, it is not Ramakrishna Mahatma in a monastic organization. It depends upon individual's character. Oh, I remember when we were school boys, we used to memorize English proverbs. Money is lost, nothing is lost. Health is lost, something is lost. Character is lost, everything is lost. Character. That he used to emphasize. He told about his life story. I tried to practice these three things. First, Nidondo, how to be unaffected from good and bad. Napriyapriyas Prishataha. Chandra Gupanishad says, in Vara Brahman, good and bad, happiness, misery cannot affect his mind at all. Because it dwells in that cosmic consciousness. Second thing he says, I try to repeat mantra all the time. Third, Lila Chintam. I used to think the divine play of Sri Ramakrishna. <laughs> they wanted to take his, I think, urine sample or some blood sample and urine sample for the test. So he asked his attendant, did you send the sample? Well, yes. How do you know that is my sample? Well, Maharaj, I wrote a, on that, that bottle, I wrote um, Swami Gumbirananda. Oh, you did not find any, <laughs> find my name. How did you give it the place? You did not get a better place to write my name. <laughs> my name <that> you didn't <laughs> sample, you wrote that name on there. He made a joke. Then he was telling, you know, how much money do you spend per month for me? My expenses. Oh, Maharaj, maybe 1,000 to 1,500 rupees per month. So much money you spent for this old man. I should die soon. Don't you think so? 1,000 rupees to 1,500 rupees you are spending. Then the attendant said, Maharaj, you not have to worry. The devotees, those who come and bow down to you, they give you more than that. You are earning more. <laughs> oh, then I should leave. <laughs> I remember when, when Christmas time, some devotees gave me some gifts. I used to send money every, every year to cover the expenses on of his servants or cook. Then he wrote to me later, you not have to send any more. My devotees are supporting me. Uncle Namaraj, as long as you are alive, I shall continue to send money to you. Christmas gift I used to send to him. Then he wrote me a letter. <laughs> It was a, they were going to take a group photo. So we see sat there. The photographer was telling, Maharaj, please smile. Smile. My name is Gambhira Ananda. <laughs> the grave one. <laughs> I don't know how to smile. <laughs> but very, very humorous sometimes. Very extremely humorous. <laughs> I have one story I shall tell that I remember in Hollywood 
One day we are talking about rules and regulations of the monastic order. Then I told Maharaj, your rules and regulations are for me and for some good monks. Those who are disobedient, hopeless monks, they do not listen. Then he said, you know, if you want to have an organization, you must have some rules and regulations, which is extremely important. Otherwise, the organization cannot function. Then he told me a funny story. You know, once a Afghan person, we call it Kabuliwala, they do not bathe, long dress, they sell dry fruits and big turban, and they smell terrible. But they are very good looking, robust body. So one day there was a heavy rain, this Kabuliwala entered a Shiva temple, put his two legs, boot on, the, on Shiva's head and he was sleeping. And a Brahmin entered in that temple, accidentally his foot touched the lingam, the Shiva's image. Immediately Shiva became very angry with a trident in hand, attacked that Brahmin. <laughs> then he said, Lut, my accidentally, I did not do it intentionally, my <laughs> accidentally my foot touched your body and I bowed down to you, to, and you want to take action? But to look, that Kabriola puts his two feet on your head and you are not taking any action against him. He does not believe in me, so I cannot take any action. <laughs> she was saying that Kabriola, he does not believe in me, so I cannot take any action against him. But you believe in me, so I shall take action against him. <laughs> then he said, listen, in the monastic order, Chastity, poverty, obedience, these are very vital. Obedience, obey. Obey, learn how to obey. Some people have too much ego. Do you know what do they do? If you do not listen to them, they will either they will leave the order or they will not cooperate with you. They will not work. And their monastic life is also will not be very bright. Is it disgruntled? When he was the executive head and he knew that, but he became an ideal monk of the Ramakrishna order and he demonstrated how to lead a life. I just told you in brief, I have so many things to talk to you. Last night till 11 o'clock I read the whole book. I was in a different world. I really, really inspired reading this great life. Thank you. Um Sarve Pavant Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Makoshi Dukhavag Bhavet Durjano Sajjana Puyat Sajjana Shanti Mapnuyat Shanto Muchita Vandibu Mukta Shanyan Bimojayat May all be happy. May all be free from disease. May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous attain tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. And may the freed make others free. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, 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 my Lord.